G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. Um, yeah, sweet. So today we're going to crack into the season reviews of all the finals. Uh, sorry, of all the non-finalists, I should say. Uh, so all the teams that are obviously not partaking in the finals this year. Other teams the we're going to go through. The, yeah, the losers, yeah, of which are, both of our clubs are involved exactly. in that. So this is going to be a fun potty. Uh, this particular podcast, the entire audio version will be uploaded uh, to our audio platform, so at least Spotify. I think we're having issues with that at the moment. Um, so I'll say if you're, if you're a listener of the podcast, a lot of our episodes have just vanished um, because we're on a new host. So it may only be Spotify you can listen to this. Um, but all the uh, individual season reviews we're going to upload to YouTube is different videos. So that's just explaining how we're going to do that. Whole lot of spicy content. It is, yeah, it is, really is. And on that note, we're going to start with North Melbourne's season review. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Antifas of Spice. <laughs> Actually, ironically, they did just debut a player called Phoenix Spicer. Oh, nice. Which is one of the spicier names in the league. I remember that name Other the draft, than Sam back Palpatine. in the draft day. Eh? Back yeah, in the draft yeah, day, yeah. That's it. Um, so, we'll start off with North Melbourne. Uh, position 18th on the ladder. The mm-hmm. Wooden Spooners of this year, their record was four wins, one draw and 17 losses, uh, and their percentage was 70.3%. They started the season incredibly poorly, but ended it n- more or less not looking like the Wooden Spoon team. What did you make of North Melbourne yourself? But they seem to be like the most well-regarded Wooden Spoon mm. team in history, I'd almost say. Mm. like A lot of people are going like, despite the fact they were Wooden Spooners, they're a lot better than everyone thought they were going to be, because... I think that's just probably a byproduct of expectation of them being that low. Mm. Anything was going to succeed it. And I think it's also... They have, had, they have had a bit of more success and people saw they're ahead of schedule, I'd say, all that sort of stuff. I think it's also because they ended the season well. Whereas Adelaide you, did the same thing last year. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. you're like, oh, Adelaide are great. But midway yeah. through the season, uh, certainly with Adelaide, they were winless and we were talking about them as being, yeah. you know, potentially going winless that year. Um had you flipped North Melbourne's fortunes this year and they'd started the season well and ended it poorly, then the, the narrative I think it was 2016 again. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 well, not quite that bad, but yeah, the the um, the narrative around a four-win team uh, would be a bit different. But then again, it is it is promising that the a young side has improved mm. and that's something they can really take it into next year. Have you seen enough to feel confident about their rebuild? The four wins thing stands out to me because I remember when Freo first went to Pierce at the end of the 2015 type run, Four wins was like our baseline. The fact that they're already there sort of seems like a pretty mm. good indicator that they've got something to build on. They did improve by one win, uh, yeah. albeit in a shortened season. So you extrapolate yeah. that, and that's about the yeah. same. Yeah, to be course, honest, yeah. but it is. It is, uh, and they've gone down on the ladder. Yeah, but um, I think they- uh, yeah, that was the other point because when we had our four win season, we were nowhere near the bottom of the ladder. Like when we had our bottom. Is that right? I thought you were like. Second last. Oh, yeah, something like that. Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't actually maybe I'm don't talking remember. about my last, yeah. It was a 2016 draft. Or maybe not. It was Griffin Logue. With yeah, six, yeah, seven, six yeah. Six or seven, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we weren't as putrid with the four wins. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The fact they're bottom of the ladder but with four wins means maybe most years they wouldn't be bottom of the ladder with four wins. I think that was sort of what I was trying to get yeah, at. Yeah, maybe. I confused myself a bit there. It'd be quite truthful. Well, four wins used to get you a priority pick automatically. So, yeah. it is a little stanky. Uh, but we, I think there's a lot of positives for them. Um, yeah. I think LDU is a player that their their rebuild is kind of not reliant upon, but he, I think for him as their X Factor star mid in the future, he's one that really need to to Take make sure step. he hits that potential. Yeah. Um, guys like Simpkin, we've been talking about a lot this year. Stevenson's been a nice addition. Yeah. Nick Larkey up forward. Um, so hard, even. 
Yeah, Zuhar Zuhar as well. There's there's a lot of good young kids. Taron Thomas is another one. Yep. Um, where you can you can see the shoots, the green shoots, um, as opposed to you know maybe 12 months ago, it wasn't quite as obvious that these players were going to take the next step. Hall and Zebel as well. I'd say senior players that were given sort of. Um, Different roles a little bit, yeah. but particularly Zebel has played a bit more uh, defence this year. I remember I got torn to shreds on the mid-season All Australian for putting him in my All Australian. Mm, yeah, he, and I do say the point he was a bit. He is a bit of an empty stats guy back there, but mm. yeah, I, I remember yeah. those comments as well. Yeah. Uh, I think, and I didn't a, disagree with him entirely with those when I read them. To be fair, yeah, he, I think he had a pretty productive season as did Aaron Hall, uh, particularly yeah. if you're Hall, in, was into your good. fantasy as yeah. well. Um, yeah, but overall. Um, what about some negatives? I'd say the eight losses to start the season. Yeah. One win to, from the first 13. You kind of don't want that roller coaster as much. You kind of want a bit more sort of yeah. even keel sort of thing rather than just having like the good end of the year and the dog shit start to year. That's right. You'd probably like those wins probably spread out a bit more. A yeah. bit more consistency in the structure and routine that they're trying to create. I would say that the um, the um the it is better to finish the season the way they did rather than yeah. uh, end the season poorly. Um, that, that would be my... Yeah, certainly. Observation. Uh, wooden spoon as well yeah. as the negative. And this year, they, they don't really get pick one. Like they might, because yeah. they've got. They might just take Jason Horn out, right? But it seems like more people in the know than not would yeah. at the moment prefer Nick Dacos. So yeah. similar to Adelaide last year with Jamara Ugelhagen being the best prospect, pick one. It's one of the worst years to have pick one. <laughs> Two theory. people that are biddable. Yeah, yeah. That being said, they could still end up with an absolute gem in Jason uh, Horn Francis. I yeah. think he's just changed his name to. So, in terms of the off-season strategy, they've got picks one, twenty, thirty-eight, and seventy. Uh, what would you do if you're North Melbourne this off-season? Best available, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. they're still at a best available picks rather than mm. sort of trying to fit around what they've got. Take yeah, what you think's the best kid to play football. I don't think they're in a position to need to add mature talent yet. I think it's just mm. a case of use the picks you have to get the best available young talent. Um, they will probably end up with Jason Horn Francis, but um, they're probably at the point where they probably need to look more at key position as well. Because I'm mm. thinking their young midfield is looking pretty stacked. Yeah. Uh, at least, they, I mean, they picked Will Phillips with pick three last year. You add Horn Francis to that. You got LDU, who's a young fella in that team. Powell. Simkin. Simkin. Uh, yeah, Tom Powell, exactly right. Yeah. So that, that side of it seems pretty well stocked. Um, take the best available with pick one or two, whatever it ends up being. But I think key position talent is um, is what they should be looking at. What is your overall grade for them this year? Uh, I saw someone give them like a B, which is probably a bit of a stretch. So I'd probably say a C plus, I think. Okay. I went with a flat C. Yeah. At the end of the day, they won the wooden spoon. There were some yeah. positives. Um, and they improved by win. Well, kind of not really if you extrapolate it out. Um, I'd say they went about what we expected, yeah. to be honest. So... They get I thought they were a little better than. I thought they'd be a little worse. Yeah, but it, at the end of the day, on paper, it doesn't. They didn't actually outperform many other wooden spooners. Yeah, I'm probably being a bit harsh there. I, I just think. Well, I think we saw enough to be optimistic. But in terms of what they achieved this year, that's why uh, they get a C for me. Fair shake. 